I will fight until God takes my heartbeat away. It is a system intended to protect, protect the vulnerable, but some worry it exploits them. We're talking about the probate court system when a judge will assign strangers to make all your personal financial and health decisions for you. Tonight, ABC 15 investigator Nicole Griggs spoke with one man who says he went from early retirement to filing for bankruptcy due to the system. He's now warning anyone is one tragedy away from being in his shoes. I'm very unique in that I am a survivor. Bill Chalmers calls himself that now, but a few years back, he was an executive. Worked very hard for Intel, and I rose to the level of, of senior director. Then there was Bill's divorce. His lawyer questioned his ability to make decisions, and a probate court interceded in 2017. There's a pride that's taken away. The decisions of how much money you get to spend, whether or not you buy chicken, Kraft macaroni and cheese. Before we go further, we want you to know how the probate court works. If someone like Bill is unable to care for their own needs and no loved ones step in, a judge appoints a team of professionals, a guardian ad litem, that's an advocate, a lawyer, sometimes a psychiatrist, and there's the fiduciary and the fiduciary's lawyer. I pay for everybody. So when we have a hearing, it's 400 plus 325 plus 375 plus 145. But it's not Bill, it's the fiduciary actually writing the checks under court order to protect and manage the assets. It's a big charade. Nicole. Rick Black is a national advocate for the Center for Estate Administration Reform. We estimate that there's somewhere around 15,000 to 20,000 victims each year nationwide due to predatory attorneys and fiduciaries, conservators, guardians. When his conservatorship ended, Bill had concerns about his court appointee, East Valley Fiduciary Services. My ballpark figure how much money I lost during that period of time was a little over $700,000. In 2020, Bill made 38 allegations against East Valley Fiduciary Services to the State Fiduciary Board, which is in charge of licensing and discipline. He claimed that procedures were not followed. They left me with my own bank account uh, with $200 dollars and 22 cents. Bill wanted answers, so he showed up again and again to these meetings. I have been so visible and vocal at the fiduciary board meeting for years. I know uh, Mr. Chalmers is present. Aaron Nash oversees licensing and certification. We asked him about how long their review should take. 98% of investigations should be completed within 22 months. And are they being? Um, I don't think so. It's also unclear how many complaints there are against fiduciaries. Nash says only complaints ending in discipline are made public. In 2019, East Valley was disciplined with a one-year probation after allegations they placed a man in a secure assisted living facility against his will. But even during probation, fiduciaries are eligible to take on new wards. Generally, if somebody is on probation already, and a complaint comes in, just the fact that a complaint comes in isn't necessarily a violation. As for Bill's complaint, the board's investigator substantiated 10 allegations last fall against East Valley Fiduciary Services, including not filing an estate budget with the court, conservators accounting to the court that was inaccurate and or misleading. And when the conservatorship ended, they did not leave him with 120 days of funds to live off of as required by a court order. A lawyer for the company says they do not agree with the substantiated allegations. And none of this will get Bill his money back. A probate judge ruled Bill should be paid back $312,000, but that's being appealed. A lawyer from East Valley Fiduciary Services says Bill's court proceedings were highly contentious, challenging, and required significant effort. And the East Valley was paid $60,000 by Bill, and that did not leave a 
them bankrupt. But in a separate court case, a judge ruled that it is Bill that owes them money in excess of $140,000. To me, that's the epitome of a dysfunctional system. That's why Bill and others want reforms, because six years after this all began, it's still not over for him. You know, to be honest with you, I don't want my story to come out. I. I don't want people to know, but if I can stop this from happening to someone else's mother or their father, I will fight until God takes my heartbeat away. I'm investigator Nicole Grigg, ABC 15, Arizona. Nicole will be at that fiduciary meeting tomorrow where the board is scheduled to decide if they'll take disciplinary action against East Valley fiduciaries license.